Hi everybody, Harris here with iDownloadBlog. Today we're taking a look at the brand new M2 MacBook Air. In this video, we'll be going through the unboxing experience, some hardware tips and tricks and walkthrough, some software tips and tricks, as well as some great accessories for your new MacBook Air. I'll have this video divided into different chapters, so if you wanna to skip to a specific section, you can do that. Let's go ahead and get started with the unboxing experience and what's inside the box. So the packaging here is pretty familiar for most Mac owners, and when you open it up, you have the Mac sitting up top. Underneath that, you're gonna have several accessories and your documentation. So you have, depending on which model you buy, either a 30, 35, or a 67 watt charger in the box. For me, because I bought the base model, this comes with the 30 watt USB-C charger. Then you also get your MagSafe two meter power cable with magnetic charger to attach to your Mac. And then on top of that, you get your paperwork, which includes color matching Apple stickers to go with your laptop. So on the left hand side, you get your MagSafe charging connector. And this is the magnetic connector, of course, and you just attach it just like that and you can start charging your Mac. This will be the fastest way of charging your Mac, but you can also charge using these ports with a USB-C cable. So you can charge from any three of these options. And these are USB-C Thunderbolt 4, which means that you can get very fast data connections with this, whether you want to attach something like a portable SSD or just something like a charging cable to charge another device or anything else you wanna to connect to it, including, of course, USB-C hubs if you wanna attach other things like SD card, HDMI, USB type A, and ethernet, and more. And then on the other side of the device, you get your headphone jack. And you'll touch ID to the top right hand corner. And with touch ID, you can unlock your computer with just your fingerprint. And of course you have your trackpad at the bottom, which does support your multi-touch gestures. So you can go back and forth between desktops. You can close applications and, and see your desktop, things like that. And then your speakers are actually at the very top of the computer, just below the screen underneath that segment there. Now this comes in four different colors. I here have the silver color, but you can also get the midnight color, which is the bluish black color, which everyone has been saying gets a ton of fingerprints. There's also the starlight, which we've seen before, and the space gray. But again, this is the silver, and I can just compare it to last year's MacBook Air with the space gray, and you can see the tone difference. The, the space gray is definitely a bit darker than the silver. In terms of your spec options, I went for the eight gigabytes of RAM option last time with the M1 MacBook Air, and sometimes ran into problems with a lot of tabs open, a lot of different programs, so I opted for the 16 gigabyte of RAM option. I think most people will be fine with eight, but if you do a little bit of heavy usage, you probably want either the 16 or 24 gigabyte of RAM option with this computer. And then keep in mind that this is the 256 gigabyte SSD, which has been shown to be slower than the 512 gigabyte SSD. So if you want the fastest performance, you're gonna to want to get the 512 or one terabyte or two terabyte SSD on this machine, which obviously makes it more expensive. In terms of actual available space with this machine, when I first got it, it said it had about 245 gigabytes available of the 256 and a good amount of that was used with the software. So I actually only ended up with about 210 gigabytes of usable storage right off the bat when I downloaded this machine. I think it's probably a little bit more than this 207 number because it had downloaded a couple things um, before that, but somewhere around 210, 220 gigabytes of actual usable storage with the 256 gig SSD. So if you use a lot of storage, you'll probably want the 512 gigabyte SSD, which will also give you better performance. So now that we've covered the hardware and the specs, I wanna jump into a couple accessories. So as I mentioned, this comes with either the 30 watt charging brick, or if you get the more expensive Mac, you can get a 35 watt charging brick with two USB-C ports. Now with my testing of this battery power uh, charger, I was able to get up to 65 watts of performance using the MagSafe power adapter with this Mac. So that's gonna give you your fastest charging is with a 67 or higher watt charging brick and the MagSafe. But then I was also able to get 55 watts out of the USB-C port with a Thunderbolt 4 cable. So if you get a 55 or higher watt 
charging outlet, such as, you know, I have this one here, which can get me 100 watts. So with this, I could charge via USB-C about 55 watts. And then with a regular USB-C cable is able to get 50 watts of charging power to this computer. If you do want to get a spare charger, I probably wouldn't buy Apple's because you can get pretty good ones. So this is a 30 watt charging cube that I've been using from Ojai. Um, that's really easy just to throw in a backpack. Uh, Spigen makes a 20 watt one, which is also pretty compact. This is an Anchor one that's super small and is 20 watts. And this is a dual charger from Anchor that I believe gets about 60 or 65 watts of, of charging. So something like this is going to be cheaper than Apple's. If you want a charger to throw in the backpack or your car or for travel, something like that. And this does have two ports. So I would recommend going third party if you wanted to get a second charger for travel or whatever. And I'll leave these linked down in the description for your best charging options for this Mac. And then in terms of mice, when I'm doing video editing, I like something like the Logitech MX Master 3. This is awesome, super ergonomic with tons of controls and a sideways scroll. Then found something a little bit more portable. The Logitech MX Anywhere 3 is really good. This has two side buttons, a nice scroll wheel. And then if you want something super portable um, and super quiet, so if you're using this at a coffee shop, you're not going to be annoying anybody because it's quite quiet. This is the Logitech Pebble. So I'll leave these three mice linked down in the description as well if you want a good mouse to use with your computer. Okay, and now let's get into the software tips and tricks with this laptop. So up first, if you use a four finger drag on your trackpad and swipe up, you can get into your mission control. Now one cool thing about this is that if you press the space bar while your mouse is hovering over something like this screenshot, pressing the mouse will enlarge it so you can get a better idea of what you're looking at. So this is especially useful for documents, things like that, where it's hard to see what you're looking at. Just by pressing the space bar, you can zoom in on whatever you are looking at in mission control. All right, next is a tip in the menu bar. So menu bar and control center, and control center is right here. By clicking on this, you get different options to everything from do not disturb to your keyboard brightness, display options, and more. But if you want any of these options to be in your menu bar, it's as simple as dragging it over. So say I want keyboard brightness to be in my menu bar. I just click on it and I bring it over. And just like that, that is now in my menu bar. And if I don't want it in my menu bar, I go to control center, I click on keyboard brightness and it takes it away. And similarly with do not disturb, if I don't want it up there, I can turn it off just like that. But I can put it back. One I really like to have is the now playing. I think this one's great. This will show you anything that's playing on your entire device. So it could be music, it could be Safari, it could be Spotify, uh, it could be podcasts. It'll give you a list of everything that's playing on your device. So you have one cohesive list of all the media places. So if your device is ever playing media and, or is playing sound and you're not sure where it's coming from, you can try clicking on this and see if it lists any places where it's coming from. Now up next is a keyboard setting that I really like. If you hold down option and brightness, you can go straight into your display settings where you can adjust if you have multiple displays connected, things like that. You can also do option and mission control and it takes you right into your mission control settings. Or you can do option and volume and it takes you right into your sound preferences. So this is especially useful for teachers who are always connecting their computers to projectors and things like that and always changing the volume settings. You can do option and volume and it'll take you right into your audio settings where you can change your input and your output just like that. Really handy. Okay, next, if you go into your battery and your battery preferences, there's a few options that you can change here. So for one, you have a low power mode. So if you're running low on battery, you just have a few percent left, you can turn on low power mode and try to get a little bit more time out of your battery. I'm gonna turn that off. Now by default, this had slightly dim display while on battery power. The battery is so good on this computer that I don't think that's necessary. So I went ahead and turned that off so that it wouldn't do that anymore. And you can mess around with your other settings here, including seeing your usage history to see what your battery life has been looking like. Changing what your settings look like when you're connected to power versus when you're just running on battery and more. So these are useful settings to check out. Next, if you click on the upper right-hand corner, you get into your notification center. 
Now in Notification Center, you can actually interact with these notifications in a very similar way to in the iPhone or iPad. So if you right click it or do your secondary click, you have the option of muting that particular app for one hour for the whole day, or you can just turn off notifications altogether. So say you've been getting uh, Slack messages and you realize, oh, I don't want Slack notifications on my Mac to show up. You could right click it and then click turn off or same with mail or anything else. Now, one setting I always change right away is hot corners. So if you just search for hot corners, this allows you to change what happens when you drag your mouse quickly into any corner of your display. So now Apple gives you by default the quick note. So when you drag to the bottom right hand corner, you can open up a quick note down there. Um, that's fine. I like desktop being on the top right hand corner. So if I'm using anything, I can quickly go to the right hand corner and I can see my desktop and I have access to all the files that I need right there. And then you can change other things such as lock your screen. So if I go into this corner, boom, my screen's locked and you can see some nice pancakes or screensaver is a good one that I like to use as well. And bottom left hand corner, boom, starts the screensaver, which is pretty nice. All right, I'm going to turn those off. Now, one setting I like to change is in Touch ID. So by default, password autofill is turned on for Touch ID. This means that whenever Safari or any application wants to automatically fill in your passcode, it will want you to verify with your fingerprint. I don't want that, so I turn that off so it'll automatically fill in my passwords without needing to verify my Touch ID. Now, one feature that's really cool with this new M1 and M2 computers is the ability to download iPad apps to your phone. So for instance, I love the MLB app on my iPad, but I can get this and launch it on this Mac. So if you have your favorite applications on your iPad or iPhone, you can check to see if they're available to get on your Mac and it will run basically as the iPad app. So I really do like this feature and I can interact with this just like I can on the iPad and I can check out baseball games, scores, everything like that. Okay, one setting I really like is the three finger scroll. I use this all the time. This allows me to, instead of clicking and dragging, I can do a three finger tap without clicking and drag things around like this menu bar. So you actually have to go into accessibility and pointer control. Oh, where'd it go? And pointer control. And from there you can go to trackpad options and then enable dragging right there with three finger drag. I love this. It allows me to drag anything, whether it be um, an entire window like this or if I'm scrolling inside the Maps app, I can scroll just with a three finger drag and it, I find it really convenient. But yeah, that is the M2 MacBook Air as well as some of my favorite tips for getting started, getting the most out of this computer and some great accessories as well. Let me know your thoughts about this computer. If you have any questions, please leave those down in the comment section and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.